Hello boys and girls ladies and gentlemen this is Nishant and welcome to another episode of the Nishant girl show this show is for people who want to live a fulfilled life through mindfulness practices and personal transformation my job on this show is to invite world class performers to share their practices to live a fulfilled life and today's episode guest is Alison Jackson Alison Jackson is the founder of Alison Jackson Fitness She is passionate about all things health and fitness but she really loves sharing her knowledge and expertise to help corporate moms get lean eating foods they love so they can be at their best. She knows exactly how hard it is to work full time, take care of the kids and household plus try to fit in working out, eating right and take care of yourself. Alison has spent the last 7 years training and competing in figure competitions. even winning three pro cards in one year so she has a crystal clear picture of what it takes to get to your ideal weight and stay there now she is ready to share what she has learned and experienced now let the episode begin Alison welcome to the show thanks for having me it's great to be here what did you eat in the breakfast today what did i have for breakfast today Oh, I had something that's actually become my favorite and you're going to laugh. You're going to be like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, I have these rice cakes and I have a uh, mashed up avocado and egg whites on top of them. Egg whites, which is protein, avocado, mm-hmm. good fat and rice yep. cakes for carbohydrates. Carbs. Yeah, you got it. How many calories does it have? Um, that would be it's just around 250. 250 calories. Yeah. Everybody talks about eating less in the morning. How do you manage <laughs> eating so much in the morning? <laughs> Could you elaborate on that? It's funny cuz I feel like it's very filling for that. Like I like to get the most bang for my buck. So I like to be, feel full but not have that many calories. So um what I've been doing lately, especially now with the with the pandemic and being homebound, is I've been doing intermittent fasting. So I don't know if you've ever tried it, but um you have an eating I window have. so i you have okay good i know a lot Actually, of people i have done excessively the 16 but really i mean i have done for four weeks five weeks i go extreme nice i um i've been following like the circadian one that's like 13 hours so i stop eating at 8 o'clock at night and then start eating again around 9 o'clock in the morning Um I struggle with that 16 8 the, the fasting for 16 hours that's that's too much for me. Um but that's how I typically that's why I have like a good breakfast after that. So you eat so you eat, your eating window is 13 hours and then 8 hours and you follow circadian yeah. rhythm. So what is circadian yeah. rhythm? So circadian is supposed to be um following kind of your sleep patterns and the sun. So I don't skip breakfast essentially. I just have a later breakfast. Um so my fasting is 13 hours and my eating window is obviously a little bit longer but um I like to have bigger meals cuz I like to feel full. So when I when I wasn't prior to that when I wasn't doing intermittent fasting I would have three meals and two snacks and I, you know my meals were a lot smaller so I just constantly felt like I was hungry. Oh. Well before we get into the weeds uh let's talk about you and your life. How would your family mm. describe what you do for a living? <laughs> so, uh, let's see in uh, like 30 second uh, 30 second speech on what I do. Um Take your time. I, no worries. Take your time. <laughs> I am a married mom of two teenagers. I live in New Jersey. I've spent the past 20 years in the corporate communications field and over the past about 10 years I started competing in bodybuilding, which has evolved into this passion side business of Allison Jackson Fitness. Um so yeah I've kind of I've um lived a very authentic life like I just I just like to you know like you have fun if it's not fun don't do it right so um you still have to be you know you have to pay the bills so I I need to to work and have a job but I I love what I do I love communications I love the fitness I you know, obviously love my family um so it's been great and yeah definitely no complete sense then So what was your motivation to get into the fitness industry 10 years ago So it's funny I've always um been interested in fitness so I played field hockey in high school and college 
Uh, and I actually used to read my dad's muscle and fitness magazines back in the day. And I was always enthralled with how people could change their bodies through diet and exercise. And that was always in the back of my head as something I want to try. Um, I've always been into trying new things. I've done marathons and triathlons and tough mutter runs. Um, but that, that bodybuilding competition was always weighing on the back of my mind. So um, I finally discovered a competition coach about 10 years ago. Uh, and that really got me going. And she helped me um, compete in that first show. And I thought it was going to be a bucket list item, like a one and done. And then I got the bug and I was like, wow, this is really fun and cool. And it's this whole like underground culture of bodybuilders and, you know, tracking calories and macros and, you know, doing different workouts and what works and what doesn't. And very scientific, which is fun too, you know. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the bodybuilding evolved into people asking me, how are you getting stage ready? What are you doing to, cause every year I drop about 15 to 20 pounds, um, to compete. So people kept asking me, what are you doing? And then somebody was like, you should really coach. Like you should coach other people to lose weight. Uh, and that's how I feel like my business found me, which, uh, which is funny and, and awesome at the same time. Interesting. And you mentioned that bodybuilding is fun. Is it really fun? <laughs> You know, the fun, I'll use fun with air quotes. The fun part is it's that goal. I, I won't do something. I won't give 110% effort unless there's a goal at the end. And bodybuilding is that goal, like getting on the stage, knowing I'm going to be judged with other people in a you know very small bathing suit. Um, that keeps me on track with my diet. That keeps me pushing really hard on my workouts. I'm always thinking somebody's out there working harder than me, and I'm not going to let that happen. So that it really it gives me that drive. Um, so I guess that's the fun part. It keeps the fire lit for me. I have seen your bodybuilding pictures in 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2019, and they look amazing. Oh, thank you. A lot of people feel shame about their body, mm -hmm. about their weight. What's your thought process on that feeling shame? Or did you ever feel shame about your body in the past? I did. I grew up with really um, bad body image. And I think that's, that's something young girls struggle with to this day. I mean, with, especially now with social media. Um, I was that 12 year old girl who always swam, you know, at birthday parties with a t shirt over my bathing suit. I didn't want anyone to look at me. I was ashamed of my body. I felt like I was bigger than everyone else. Um, I've always struggled with my weight. And so I get what people go through. Um, what, you know, they kind of equate their self worth with their weight and with the scale and that number. Um, and it's hard and it's, you know, uh, it's something I, I continue to grapple with. You know, it's hard to get that lean and get on stage and then put on 20 pounds and be okay with it. Um, so you do need, you definitely need a strong mental mindset um, when it comes to competing. Um, but I think it's, you know, wellness overall is a three-legged stool. It, it's, it's the spiritual, it's the mental, it's the physical, right? Um, you can't have one without the other. And uh, on Instagram or in life in general, I see a lot of people having great body, six pack abs and very muscular tone and but they they may not have good emotional or spiritual fitness. Mm -hmm. So how can we have balance or equal to being balanced in different areas of life, not just focusing or getting obsessed about just physical fitness? Because uh, the social media is promoting so much thing about getting six pack halves, doing this and that, you know. So how can we achieve that? A lot of people struggle with that. Yes, yes, I totally agree. I have a 13 year old daughter and all she keeps talking about is six pack abs that she sees on Instagram and TikTok. Um, so I totally get that. But I think it's really about um, mindset, meditation, connecting with that inner voice in your head and squashing those those voices that say you're not good enough, that you're not fit enough, you're not thin enough. It's about feeling good. Um, if you feel really good at a certain weight and that's not your dream weight, then maybe you really need to rethink that goal weight. I mean, it's a number. Nobody sees that number. It's not tattooed to your forehead. Nobody knows what it is. Um, I, I really think people need to think deeply about what makes them feel good. You know, um, obviously healthy foods and exercise and fresh air and, and meditating and being grounded all make you feel good ideally so it's really connecting with that and not being so uh, you know caught up in how you look and because and, I do feel like social media is just a fleeting moment um, 
you know, these girls post these pictures and it's like, or what else is going on there? Yes. Do you feel that somebody can feel amazing even if they are overweight or they feel that their weight is not ideal weight, but they still can be happy and fulfilled? I do. I really do. Um, you know, obviously you want to make sure you don't have any health issues if you're overweight, but if you feel good and you're healthy and I like it from a, you know, physical doctor, pers medical perspective, you're healthy then it, so you're not, it, and that's the other thing too, you know, they come up with these quote unquote ideal weights, these, these charts that doctors have, and it doesn't account for, you know, how much muscle you have. If you have a, a, a thyroid issue, if you have other issues, um, but I think, you know, people really just need to feel good in their own skin, regardless of the number. And if everything else is healthy, you know, their blood, their blood levels are great. They're, they're, they have all the right vitamins and nutrition and all that. Um, yeah, I think it's okay to be, like I said, I fluctuate 20 pounds. So um, while I sometimes feel like, oh my gosh, I feel so fluffy and, you know, I don't want to say fat because I'm not, um, but it, it's hard. It is hard, but it's like, do I feel good? And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I feel like, oh, okay, I could, you know, the waistband's a little tight. <laughs> uh, but most, for the most part, I feel great. How much do you weigh right now, if you don't mind asking me? Yeah, uh, right now I am 141, and my stage weight is 125. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm five foot six. I can I can ask you. Maybe you can coach me right now. And I know for the listeners, this is not a personal coaching session, but I would love to take advice <laughs> from absolutely. Alison. So I'm five nine, and I am around 160 mm -hmm. pounds. I I don't have six pack abs, but I feel great about my body i do extreme if i am um, i am more of extreme person if i eat healthy i would do extreme eating healthy if i eat junk i would do extreme junk i i don't do moderation well actually <laughs> I, i'm a believer <laughs> you'd be great of, for bodybuilding <laughs> i'm a believer in intermittent fasting i've been doing it for the last 6 7 weeks <laughs> so so but i feel good about it but yeah you know, i feel good about it you know my emotional health is fine there are days when I struggle. I feel that, you know, I've, I've gotten some fat on my tummy, but, you know, mm -hmm. I feel good overall and I don't blame myself. I don't feel shame about it. But yes, there is always another level to feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can, I know I'm digressing here. If, you know, it's about, again, coming back to this feel good factor. Even mm -hmm. if we don't have great body, if we feel good about what we have or who we are, that matters the most as long as our health is fine and playing a long game. Yes, yes. And I think one of the ways it's easy to get out of those ruts or when you kind of do go to a dark place and you don't feel great about life in general, um, I think gratitude and, and having a gratitude journal or just thinking about all the things that are going well in your life, um, whether it's health, family, job, um, there's so much to be thankful for. It could be as simple as you wake up and you hear the birds singing. It's like that. Something to be grateful for. Well, this is interesting to hear from somebody who has performed in a figure competition to talk about gratitude. <laughs> what does your <laughs> gratitude practice look like? I'm curious to know. Ah, yes. So uh, I would love to share that. So um, I meditate every morning and then I do have a gratitude journal that it's a quadrant um, and there's each quadrant gets three bullet bullets and the top left is grateful. The top right is what to let go of. The bottom left is what to manifest, which it might be a little woo woo, but a lot of the manifesting is about vaccines and cures and getting back to some degree of normalcy. And then the, um, the bottom right is uh, what to improve. What can I improve that I, I kind of need to work on? I have never heard about this. I have, have had so many guests on this podcast and, you know, nobody talked about it. Usually we talk about, okay, write down five things you're grateful for. So you have four quadrants, mm -hmm. you know, what letting go what you can improve, what you can manifest, what are you grateful for? That's yeah. amazing. 
and I try to and I try to make them different every day, and I try to make them not not like you know family job finances. Like you need to get get granular. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah. So um, let me see. This morning, I think I put like I was grateful for the sun is shining today. Um, I feel I feel really good. Like I, my back was really sore the other day, so I woke up. You know, I woke up this morning. I felt really good. So I was thankful for a good night's sleep and, and feeling um, feeling better. Um, grateful that I'm able to put food on the table for my family when some people are struggling right now. Um, grateful for um, the ability to have a yard to walk outside and, and go outside and just, you know, if I can't take a walk down the street, I can walk around my yard. Um, so it's really kind of um, taking a magnifying glass and really taking a deep dive into what's around you and looking at what you have and what others might not have. Do you ever feel proud of your body? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it took a long time. Okay, I'm 46. I'm going to be 47 next month. It took a long time. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, if, if, if you can do it at 46, or you have been doing it for the last 10 years. Yeah, I'm sure yeah there you go. I had a good said, run. <laughs> you have had patience, and I'm sure. So people in 20s and 30s have a long way to go. Guys, don't beat yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think so, it's important that, um, you know, if you if you have children or you have youngsters around you uh, to be a, a role model, you know, I, I worry about the impression I make on my kids when I'm, you know, kind of I get a little crazy with my diet and workouts and stuff. Um, so I try to show them balance as well. Balance is the key. Mm hmm. And coming back to your corporate job and you have a corporate job, you have two teenage daughters, right? Um, I have a 16-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. Son, yeah. How do you incorporate this fitness thing into your daily lives? Because a lot of people struggle, and I do do struggle mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, so um, especially now, now is the time, if, especially being stuck at home, to create a schedule. Create a schedule that will suit you now and will suit you when we go back to some degree of normalcy. Um, and if you do nothing else, if you do nothing, you have no gym equipment, you're, you might be in a one room uh, flat or apartment somewhere. My um, suggestion and what I've been touting lately is get 10,000 steps. That should be your goal every day. Um, you could download a free app on your phone that has a pedometer. A lot of the phones have, you know, step counters. I have a Fitbit that I swear by. Uh, there's, you know, different smartwatches. Um, and what you want to do is find ways to get those steps in. So I typically take a 10 morning, 10 minute walk in the morning, a walk at lunch, and then a walk after work. Um, and my goal is try to hit 5,000 by noon and then, you know, hit the rest of it before the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, it's calories in versus calories out. But if you find that you are stress eating and emotional eating, um, you want to, you know, 90% of your efforts are, is going to be through your diet. But then the rest, you do need movement. You need to, to, to keep moving. So in your daily routine now, you take three sets of, three sets of walking and one set consists of 10 minutes. Yeah, so three 10 minute walks, but that's in addition to, so I still, obviously, I have a home gym. I had a home gym before this all started. Um, so I weight train every day. I do yoga. I mean, I do, I have a, a morning workout that I typically do. But in addition to that, I still need to, I still need to take walks to hit my steps. How many calories can we drop in 30 minutes of walking? 30 minutes of walking. Um, it really depends on, obviously, your height, your weight, your male, your female, your age. But typically around, not that many, uh, maybe 100, 150. Is that? Mm, it's not that big number. No. No, it's not. It's, um, it's funny. What burns the most calories is what's called NEAT, and it's non-exercise thermogenic activity. So that's basically fidgeting, um, getting up and down during the day. Uh, it's it's how you move throughout the day. That's really what burns the largest percentage of calories during your day. But walking is like a cardio, but it it keeps our health and heart mm -hmm. healthy. Overall health is remains good. Yes, absolutely. If we don't lift weights, if we don't perform any strength training, is it going to have any impact in the long run? Yes. So as we age, we lose muscle. So even if you don't want to lift weights, you don't want to bodybuild or be a power lifter or anything, um, just doing body weight exercises, so squats, push-ups, 
uh, dips on a, on a couch or a bench. Um, body weight exercises can definitely help and help retain that muscle um, that we do kind of lose as we age. This is powerful. So you are saying it can retain our muscles, even if our muscle muscle size doesn't go up, it mm -hmm. won't lose when we age. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you coach a client when they literally don't know how to start and where to go? They just they just know that they want to lose fat or they want to lose weight. And what's your process look like? Yep. So the first thing I have people do, and anybody can do this, is download my Fitness Pal. It's a free app. Download to your phone, to your desktop, and just start tracking your food. So I have them just start tracking their food. Don't make any changes. Um, I just want to see what you eat. So what I'll do is I'll have them friend me. I'll look on the back end and be able to see. Um, and what's nice about my Fitness Pal, it has like 14,000 foods loaded into it. You can scan barcodes. Like if you had a package of something with a barcode, you could scan it. Um, and it shows your macros, which is your protein, carbs, and fats, your macronutrients. Um, and what I typically do is a lot of people, and this is based on you know bodybuilding and what I've done for the past 10 years and what works, um, is really a lot of people don't eat enough protein. And again, protein is a building block of muscle that you need that to, to retain and grow muscle. Uh, but a lot of people don't eat enough protein and protein keeps you full too. So if you had a all carb meal, you're going to be hungry in, in less time than if you had a predominantly protein meal. Um, so after they track their food for a while, I'm able to, to make tweaks and evaluate what they need based on their goals. And then you work from there and you don't have to dras drastically cut calories. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to get so low that your body thinks it's starving and then it latches on to everything and, and you don't want to lose weight. So um, there's a whole, you know, obviously a whole process, but that's usually the first thing I have them do is download my fitness pal, start tracking, and then start, you know, monitoring your steps. And then what is the role of adding shakes in our weight loss process or weight gain process? And and the reason I'm asking you, asking you is that because we have so many companies like Whey Protein, this shake, that shake, you know, they mm -hmm. claim to drop fat, drop fat or gain muscles. Are they myth or do they have a specific role in this process? So I, um, I'm a big proponent of protein powder. I, I like it. I use it. Um, and it's helpful for people that struggle to get the protein in. It's just, uh, you know, obviously you want a quality product. I know there's a lot of MLM companies and places that, you know, tout this and tout that. Um, there are some quality protein powders on the market. They've come a long way. I mean, I've been using protein powders since I was a teenager. Um, and there's different kinds. Like there's plant-based, there's whey, there's casein. Um, it really depends on what your goals are. But um, yeah, I and it's funny because I actually hate protein shakes. I make all different things with protein powder. So I'll make brownies, I'll make pudding, I'll make pancakes, I'll make anything, but I will not drink it. <laughs> I don't like to drink my calories. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> I think it has around 100 calories per scoop, if I'm not Yeah, wrong. depending on which ones, which ones you take, because I think the one I have is like 130. But yeah, that's generally the range is 100 to 150. Yeah, I used to have casein protein, and that was horrible. You had it, and it was horrible? Yeah, casein. Casein protein was horrible, and yeah. it, it takes a long time to digest. Yeah, so typically that's something you have like before you go to bed because it is it takes longer to break down. So while you're sleeping and fasting, it it just that's it's supposedly you're supposed to take it. So cons considering that we have millions of whey protein or just protein powders in the market, how should mm -hmm. somebody know that which protein is the best fit for them, which is the best quality? So you definitely want to. Um, it's all. Obviously, everyone everyone is different, has different tastes. I can tell you the two that I recommend that it can be found anywhere is like Optimum Nutrition, Gold Standard. It's very, it's reasonably priced. It's been on the market forever. Um, my husband uses it. The chocolate tastes great. Um, another company that's been in business for a long time, very reputable, um, and you you know you get what you pay for. It's um, they're called Beverly International, and they have some amazing protein powder um, flavors. My favorite is Graham Cracker. I. I mix it in everything. I mix it in Greek yogurt. I mix it in cottage cheese. I make I make all kinds of stuff out of it. It's um, very good, high quality product. I want to use that. I would love to try that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can find it. Um, they're on Amazon, and then um, a website that I use that has um, really great discounts on supplements overall. It's called DPSNutrition.net. Um, that's where I typically find a lot of my products. Cool. Yeah.
understand. Uh, I, I have seen people losing weight, and after some time or after a few months, they gain everything back. Mm-hmm. And this is a cycle. What do you think is underlying? Is it the belief system? Is it something else going on? What is that? So as much as I, I mean, I don't want people to think they have to track forever, but it's really what gets measured gets managed. So if you have your eye on the prize and you're focused on losing weight and you get there, you really need to figure out what you have to do to maintain it. Because a lot of people are like, all right, I reached my goal. Let me go back to what I was normally doing. No, there, there's maintenance involved. Um, so you really need to continue to eat like you were when you were losing weight, but maybe you could eat a little bit more now because you're not trying to lose um, so I think that's what happens is people kind of take their eye off the prize and um, think they can just go back to eating whatever they want. And again, calories in versus calories out. So the, the weight is going to creep back on. And maintenance is like a lifetime process and losing and gaining is, is a short term thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and sometimes I feel like maintaining is much harder than losing. Maintaining is much harder than losing. Yeah, because I, I feel f- like with losing, you have a goal. Like, okay, I'm trying to get to this number. Do you keep pushing and pushing? Whereas maintaining, it's like, eh, so I'm up a couple pounds. I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah, personally, I find losing fat challenging because you have to eat less carbs and you are short of energy mm-hmm. most of the time. I find it's true. I find a struggle in losing fat. And uh, yeah, we, we have been talking a lot about physical fitness and now i would love to shift some gears over here uh i would like to get your opinion on the correlation of self image with physical fitness mm-hmm. i see a lot of people with great body but they do not think of themselves any better they they feel miserable deep deep down inside their physical structure is beautiful perfect you know but yeah. deep down they don't believe in themselves their self image or you say you know their body image or whatever you call they they lack a lot so how can we develop that overall self image to live a better life mhm yeah i um i know a lot of competitors that that deal with that a lot like no matter how even when they're on stage it's like they still feel like they're not good enough or look good enough um, and I think it's a form of body dysmorphia, which is like, you know, a disorder that you can't see almost like what, what anorexic and bulimic people go through. I'm not saying that, you know, just because you don't think you have a nice body means you're, you have an eating disorder. But a lot of times um, it goes back to like confidence and self-worth and goes back to the beginning of our conversation with meditation and really connecting with your inner voices and why, you know, digging deep into why do you think that you don't look good or aren't good enough? Um, and I think a lot of times it's comparing to the, you know, the girls on Instagram or, you know, pictures you see in a magazine or models, um, which is unrealistic. You know, a lot of these people are airbrushed. Um, so I really think it's about connecting with your inner voice, um, understanding why you might have that pattern or have that belief about yourself. Um, and, and and being able to surrender and let it go, um, it t- it's not easy. Uh, I mean, I'll be the first to admit that. And like I said, it took me about, you know, 40 years <laughs> to get there. Um, but I, I think, you know, it's it's work, but I think it can be done. So when you work with your clients, do you recommend any mindset component or reading book suggestion or something like that to develop overall fitness, not just physical fitness? Yes. So I always highly recommend that they um, take up meditation, that they try it, that they make that part of their practice. And I, um, I struggled. I was always anti-meditation. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's not for me. Um, and I've been doing it now for almost two years. And it's a game changer. I mean, just um, from ha- like listening to myself to how I manage stress. Um, and I use a, an app, a free app. It's called Insight Timer. And it gives you like um, different different themes like gratitude and stillness and um, you could do guided meditation or you could set a timer and just do it on your own. Um, But I always ask my clients to really consider doing that. Um, And I I give them recommendations on different books like um, uh, the author escapes me, but it's the, you are a badass. Oh, Jen Sincero, Cicero, Uh, you are a badass. She has a bunch of different books that are really good. 
um, just around self self worth and um, what you bring to the table and value, valuing yourself. Because um, I do a, a lot of people that I work with, you know, struggle with that, uh, with being good enough. And a lot of them, you know, want to lose weight to do better in their jobs, to make sure they're attractive to their husbands. Um, so, yeah, no, I think mindset is so critically important. This is so powerful because we always want to work on our outer being and we mm -hmm. miss the inner being. And if we have this inner being stamina and strength then i think i feel that you know working on our body there's the physical part becomes less complicated when we have that strong foundation or when we work towards developing that strong foundation of emotional mental and spiritual foundation what do what do you think do you have any yes on that? yes uh, they, well, they say the body achieves what the mind conceives right so um, even like when I ran marathons, I'm like, anybody can run a marathon, but really it, it's like your mind is what shuts down before your body does. Um, so the mind is just so incredibly powerful. And visualizing. And I, I, I'm not a runner. I used to, I started running a year ago, about a year ago from, I could not run for even a minute. I used <laughs> to set a goal. Okay. From one minute, I would add 30 seconds every day. And there came a point I could run for 30 minutes, nonstop. From thirty, adding thirty second every single That's day. That's amazing. And then I stopped, and now I cannot run thirty minutes. I can run for fifteen minutes. <laughs> You're back to square one. <laughs> yeah. So it's a practice, you know. It's a practice. Yeah. So that that is stamina and having patience in the process. That okay, is adding is small. It's like you know when we go to gym, and it's a shame when we go to gym when we f we feel shame when we go to Gold's gym or any big gym that people are lifting. Mm -hmm. high weights we cannot because it's a process we have to start lifting five pounds first <laughs> if we have yes. not lifted five pound ever we cannot lift 50 pounds exactly yeah and uh, i would like to ask you that is there any any conversation from your entire life that comes to your mind that that impacted you the most in in a positive way yeah, you know, it's funny. My mom used to always say when I was growing up, you can do anything you put your mind to. And she told me that, oh, gosh, for since, you know, since I was so little. And I always like, you know, it's always that's always been in the back of my mind. And I know people say that all the time. You could you do anything you put your mind to. And it's so true. Like I used to always think, oh, that's just something moms say. <laughs> but it's true. If you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. But what can we do with the struggle in that? process how to deal with that struggle with the struggle and believing you could do it or in that process that yeah, yeah. so uh, i'm um i'm a huge i'm all about goals um and <laughs> i always have like these big hairy goals like i just published a book and i ran a marathon and blah 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 but what you need to do is it's like eating an elephant right you're not going to eat the whole thing you, in one bite you have to eat it in small bites so you really need to take that goal and break it down you know, are you going to run a marathon in a year, in six months? You're obviously not going to run in a week. So you're going to back into whatever your goal is and break it down. What do you need to do in six months to reach it? What do you need to do in three months, in two months, in one month, this week, next week? Um, it's, the, it's the little bits of progress that you make every day that's going to get you there. And in that process, sometimes we get lost. We feel that we are not going anywhere. Yeah, you feel like you're spinning your wheels, right? But it's like it's like gardening. Like you plant a seed, it's not going to grow the next day, right? At the point. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm with you. I'm one of the most impatient people you could find. I want everything yesterday. Um, even you know, building a business. You know, uh, I, I feel like you know, you constantly are working and churning and doing and generating content and reaching out to people and. You feel like, what is this all for? But then all of a sudden, like things start to happen, and you're like, oh. Okay. Okay. So this is this is working. You know, I think it's having patience and going back to your gratitude journal. What are you grateful for? What did you move forward? Um, but no, I, I get how people lose their mojo and kind of fall off the wagon. But it's important to to you know recognize that and be self aware enough and and get back on that horse. So, have you heard of Scott Adams from Dilbert? Yes, I love Dilbert. So. I was studying about him. I was listening to his podcast and he always mentions that, you know, set goals and work on a project or any project. Even if that project fails, 
you build skills and relationships yes that's a great one because and that's what i've been thinking about over and over in my entire life if i take any project or any challenge even if it fails what i am going to learn even with this podcasting now i know i'm connected with you you can yeah. help me lose fat or gain ah, muscles exactly <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's a great point though yeah if there is a book on your life what would that book look like there was a book on my life what would that book look, look like? like hmm oh that's a tough one um i'm going to say do, 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 the little engine that could that would be the book of my life cuz i am constantly setting and crushing goals um i'm still living my mom's mantra of you can do anything you put your mind to whether it's you know it, and people laugh but it was like getting married was a goal having kids was a goal you know buying a house was a goal um and now that just keeps going so now i you know launched a podcast i published a book one of my goals is 20 speaking uh, appearances in 2020 so you know working towards that i am always about those goals and do you have any most controversial belief that you have held for a long time oh that's a good question controversial okay believe. yeah um i don't know if how controversial it is but I'm a huge believer in the whole law of attraction and manifesting and woo woo like I have oracle cards <laughs> I read every day. Um so the yeah, that's probably would be cuz my husband always laughs at me. But yeah, I love I love that stuff and I love the whole like you reap what you sow and what you put out you get back and yeah, I've been leaning into that big time lately. So, do you have any favorite spiritual go-to teacher? Yes, uh Gabriel Bernstein. Oh, and okay. and um oh my gosh, Esther Hicks. Is that her? Mm. Oh my god, mm-hmm. I'm like Yeah, the story Esther. Yeah, Hicks. Esther Hicks. Yeah. Um yeah, those are like my my two go-to's. You you should you should be a spiritual teacher rather than physical <laughs> fitness ah! teacher. <laughs> oh, I'm so right. flattered. That's so sweet. Because in your <laughs> in your fourth quadrant of being gratitude being having gratitude over what you have you have three quadrants focusing on the spiritual side <laughs> that is so funny i never even realized that i love it see that you just taught me something i have had this amazing funny conversation in a long time <laughs> on the podcast <laughs> okay let me ask you this another funny question what is okay. the bravest thing you have done in your life you don't have to include your bodybuilding okay bravest thing, thing you have done oh okay i got one i got one i um i quit a job that made me absolutely miserable and like just was a absolutely horrific job i quit it without having any job lined up and i am the breadwinner of the family mm that is so brave mm well alison uh, where can our listeners find you online So they can find me at www.allisonjacksonfitness.com and it's Allison with two L's and an I and I'm on, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook at Allison Jackson Fitness as well. So I would love for people to come visit. I will put all those links in the show notes. Awesome. Well, Allison, it has been an amazing, funny, inspirational and impactful conversation so far. Oh, good. I'm so glad. This has been awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode today. I hope you learned from this episode that you can apply in your life. If you did enjoy this, please subscribe to the podcast The Nishan Garg Show on Apple Podcast. You can also subscribe to the show through my website https://nishangarg.me. n i s h a n t g a r g dot me you can also share this podcast with your family and friends or whoever want to feel fulfilled and thank you so much again